Digital 410 Productions proudly presents the What's in Your Head podcast. Digitized live from the ACT Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the What's in Your Head podcast with your hosts Gordon and Don Abernathy. What's up, what's up, what's up, OG5? Happy Monday to y'all. Hope everything's going well. Gordon, how are you doing? Doing all right. I am busy as a one-armed paper hanger. Not too often any one-armed paper hangers out there, but uh, staying busy. What exactly is a paper hanger? <clears throat> toilet paper roll holder? I'm thinking it's a uh, wallpaper hanger. Imagine hanging oh, wallpaper okay. one arm. Wow, that's an old reference. Where did that it come is. from like the 50s? Uh, at least. It's still used today, though. You know, I was thinking on last, I was explaining to Carrie on how loud on the last episode, Bebop was standing on my desk, like blocking my camera. And I realized, I think she right. saw herself or saw me on the TV. And so she was standing on the desk to look at the TV to try to process in her little Boston Terrier mind how I can be on that thing in front of her while yet she's sitting on my lap. But today she's more distracted with everything on my desk. There you go. So how was your weekend, friend? It was a good weekend. Got lots going on, as I said, and not much I really could talk about, but things are looking up for us. Um, be able to get out of some, you know, get some things off my plate, as it were, and, and Katina's plate, and uh, it's looking positive. So here's hoping that, you know, all things considered with what's going on in the political landscape, that this is going to be a good year. Yeah, one would hope. So, yeah. <sighs> Oh, I'm so tired. I um, left Friday morning, like at four, and drove up to Georgia <clears throat> for the um, mm-hmm. the Georgia the crossroads at Malmandy World War II tactical. Not to bore mm-hmm. everybody with it, but it was a good time on Saturday. I think we did like three miles of three or four hour tactical event. Video will be available on YouTube tonight, probably tomorrow morning. So go to YouTube.com, subscribe to the Digital Four Ten Network, testing out the new camera. Um, happy with the uh video uh for some reason it's not full widescreen but i'll figure that out later but um i was i have been anticipating the weather to be cold because last year was up there it was pretty damn cold and so this year i took some more um sleep warmth materials with me such as a bale of hay um a sleeping bag for the first time ever i usually only sleep in my uniform and wool blankets but i knew it was supposed to get down like the high 30s low 40s I thank God I did because when I went to sleep, it was 42. And when I woke up, because it rained the entire previous day, all the water on my truck had frozen over. And at 8 in the morning, it said it was 35. So I think at night, it got down to probably 30. Well, I had to get 32 or lower to get the ice in there. So it got pretty damn cold. But uh, all day Saturday, did about another 8 miles. It was it was a good time. But with all the workout all I do and all the running and all the leg activity I do, one thing I don't do is squats. And um, when you're doing that sort of thing where you're walking through the woods trying to find people hiding in ambushes, you spend a lot of times in the catcher position, crouched down. And so today my quad and yesterday my quads are just killing me. And it took a little while to get uh, all that to bounce back. I was going to say you were feeling like an old man, weren't you? Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting. Um, one of the things I do when I do these long drives is – I listen to podcasts, right? And I get caught up on um, some, and some podcasts are two hours long, and so it helps on a five-hour drive. And some podcasts are thirty minutes long. You're welcome. And so I caught up on all the ones you sent me on the way up there, but on the way back, I was listening to um, a podcast about podcasts, and it's called Easy Listening, hosted <laughs> by Gina Grad and um, Teresa Strasser. Both of them previously, well, Teresa used to be the news girl on the Adam Carolla podcast, and Gina is the current news girl on the Adam Carolla podcast, and one of the podcasts they were discussing this week is a very interesting, honest podcast, believe it or not, very, very transparent and honest, and it's put up by the Catholic Church, and it's about the history of the molestations that blew up, you know, in the early 2000s up until now not only in america but around the world and how it kind of started as a cover-up and then got more and more open and they even went as far as playing interviews of some of the victims and now obviously this isn't fun content to listen to right but it's it's very intriguing to the point now keep in mind i just did two days out 
in the rain and 50 degree weather mm-hmm. for a World War II event, um, recounting and um, not celebrating, but uh, reliving the history of Malmandy that took place during the Battle of the Bulge and the Ma- Malmandy Massacre. That's when the Germans basically took all the American prisoners and shot them and put them in a shallow grave. And so I'm driving in a truck, three hours into my ride home. I got on, still got on my World War II uniform, got a truck full of World War II gear, and I'm listening to this podcast. And when they get to the end of the the segment on this particular podcast called Abuse in the Church, um, Gina's trying to describe what I just did, which is how you would describe this podcast. You wouldn't want to say it's fun. And she was kind of struggling on how to describe it because much like our podcast, mm-hmm. they have a list of talking points, but then they ad lib the rest of it. And uh, this is what she basically ended up saying, trying to describe what's uh, what about this podcast that makes you want to listen to it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, you know, it's like when people say, oh, I'm a, you know, I love, you know, World War II history. And it's like, is that really appropriate to say, you know, you love World War II history, you're obsessed with it? I mean, so many horrific, horrible things happen to so many people. So it's it's hard to sort of, it's always been hard to sort of like jive that for me, like, you know, oh, I love this topic, but this topic hurts people. So, it, but it is compelling and it is riveting. And at and this it does point, I said, well, it's, it's important. And for that reason, I am. I'm so glad that this exists. The subject matter is important. You yes. put that so... I love when you do that because I was <laughs> feeling awkward like, well, it's not necessarily that it's entertaining, no. but it it it's important and it, it is very compelling. I mean, especially victim testimony. I found myself not, you know, I found myself very curious and interested. Two things it, I... Found bizarre about this situation is it's not very often that you just spent an entire weekend and you're still dressed in the attire from said weekend that a person brings up in a podcast that you're listening to that has nothing to do with the. It'd be different. If I was listening to the What's the Skull about podcast, but this is a podcast about podcasts and they're talking about a podcast about the Catholic Church and the molestation allegations and the evidence and the proof and the reality of it. And that comes up, which is kind of a surreal moment. And then when I say, well, because it's important, and then two seconds later, Teresa said, well, that's because the subject matter is important. But what she said didn't offend me because I often tell people that all the time. People think World War II reenactors are, one, just out playing guns, and two, they're glorifying and trying to romanticize combat and war. And that's not what we're doing at all. Um, on here, we like to talk about things that used to be said back in the day, mm-hmm. and one of those things that people don't say now, and they actively try to discourage it so they can push through new idealisms, is learn from history or you're bound to repeat it. And if you want to get to know somebody or something, walk a mile in that person's shoes. And that's exactly. literally what we're doing. Thank God we're not experiencing the maiming and the murder. But in no shape or form is anybody out there Okay, maybe one or two people who are just getting into it for the wrong reasons. I'm, obviously, there's always the example that proves the rule. But majority of the people who do it, especially tactical events, because there's no public there, we're doing it to, one, try to experience what the guys went through when it comes to battling the environment. Obviously, the Battle right. of the Bulge was 32 below zero and not 30, but we're in Georgia and it's January. But, you know, we're out there in the rain, and some of the some of the cats who portray Germans, I one in particular when I got there, so I'm not doing this, it's too wet. It's like, well, we're supposed to well, be here actually, trying to experience that stuff. Right. One of the things I was thinking when you were telling the story about listening to what they were talking about, was, boy, I bet, uh, I wonder if he would have found if he was in a World War II German uniform. What's that? If you were rocking a German uniform at the time, I wonder if that would have been a little more surreal. Yeah. Um, yeah, perhaps a little bit. And you know, it's funny. I, I interviewed a couple of German quote unquote reenactors on the what's the skull, but cause not too many of them. And I asked them, I said, well, how do people feel when they see photos of you on Facebook and whatnot? And they see the SWAT stick on your I uniform. I think you're a Nazi synthesizer. But, um, you got to keep in mind how entertaining would, Save it Private Ryan be if there was no actors willing to play the Germans. Oh, exactly. In order to tell a story, you need an antagonist. You need both sides of the story. You need people willing to spend the money. And furthermore... In regular thinking, people 
understand that. It's just the And I would say ninety five no point flakes. I would say ninety five point six percent of the people who do German are actually doing the Weimar Republic, not Nazis. Uh, I don't know but anybody just, who reenacts SS though. officers and you know the death squads. Um, and a mm-hmm. lot of these guys are portraying their grandfathers who were inscripted. A lot of people don't realize if you were a male of fighting age in Germany or any of the countries in which Hitler captured, you didn't have a choice. You were forced, forced, you were forced to fight. And so these guys are representing the Weimar Republic, the, the people who were forced yeah. to fight. They're once again, no one's out there in SS uniforms or portraying, you know, the death squads, any of that horrible shit. It's just a straight, honest look. And, um, one of the interesting things I thought they did a good job um, about the. Do, have you seen Midway? I have not. Midway did a. It, obviously, it's a, it's a newer movie, and we have changed the way we view certain things. Midway did a really, really good job at presenting the Japanese side of the combat, not from a malicious boogeyman aspect, but from the views of the officers and the men who were basically doing what they're told to do. And so they really did a good job of kind of presenting, you know, both sides without making, you know, you could watch that movie from either side and not feel like you're, you're rooting for the bad guy. They did a really good job of not really making an evil bad guy, but presenting here's, here's the history, here's the operations, here's the people who are involved and here's how it went down. And that's kind of what we do in World War II reenacting. Um, you won't see anybody, you, you used to see it back in the day, but nowadays you won't see anybody like, oh, I'm going to take this German and shoot him in the back of the head and just, you know, do, you know, things like that. And so I agree with what Gina said when it comes to that. That's why most of us say we're historians. I don't know anybody who at least has put in a lot of time or maybe younger kids who like Call of Duty and all that and like the tanks and all that who say they quote unquote love World War II. But um, I think anybody who's truly embedded into whether it's just doing the history side or living history side, no one quote unquote loves world war two. So the way she described that, I agree with it's, it's important subject matter and it's intriguing. And for most of us, um, most of us are out there representing our grandfathers. You know, my dog oh, tags 100%. are exact replica of Paul Paul's. They have his name on it, his service number, his blood type, his next to kin and everything. And, you know, and now what's getting interesting is there's, uh, kids from the newer generation who, who were um, reenacting Vietnam because their grandfather fought in Vietnam. And then there's even younger cats who are kind of, um, whose dads fought in the Gulf War. So they're doing that stuff. And so, you know, reenacting, hell, Civil War reenacting goes all the way back to World War I. I mean, and actually going back after Civil War. Reenacting goes all the way back to the Native American days when they would teach the history of their tribes through reenactments of battles it's just the way that the, was the form of teaching that was how you taught history that it, that's how you you told the story and and reenactments i mean yes even think about um how stories were told or at least how they were pre- portrayed in movies on how they were told back in ancient in ancient times it was always a reenactment that's what jousting was jousting was a reenactment you know, they would have these jousting competitions and they were representing and sometimes they would reenact jousting battles that actually happened. And so, you know, it's all, it was just one of those real moments. I'm driving white line fever. I'm listening to this podcast and talking about this. All of a sudden she's basically talking about me. When I talk to people who say they're really into World War II, it's like, yeah. How many people you think she's actually spoke to are really into World War II reenacting? Um, I don't know. There's, there's quite a few people out in California. I've actually... Uh, sent her some text on um, Twitter when it's come up on their on Adam Carolla show um, about mm-hmm. uh, World War II reenacting. Or there was, I remember there was one time where Adam was reading a story or talking about somebody who decided to get away from um, technology and cell phones and took their family out camping in the woods for a weekend. And he's like, "Tweet me, I want to know how you guys go off the grid." And I sent him pictures of right after one event of me with the tanks and all like here's how i go off the grid for three days and he retweeted it and stuff like that so it's it's come up but it's just a little surreal to be in that environment have still having a uniform on and and then now i say well, well it's important and then Teresa, said well the subject matter is important it's like well thank you but it was just one of those weird surreal moments that don't happen too often i guess maybe well, if you're eating a weird meal you made up and someone mentions it in a tv show kind of 
<laughs> well, I was just thinking how off guard. See, somebody who's who's at a gas station, who's really kind of only hardly paid attention to World War II, maybe seen some shit from the movies. They're there getting their Mountain Dew or or whatever, and they walk up, and then there's this guy in his German World War II uniform. <laughs> what would they think? Um, unless yeah. it's called out, a lot of the guys will take their tunics off and just walk in there with the suspenders and the shirts. Okay. Um, I try to when I first started, I really didn't give too much think about it, thought about it. Because to me, I know the history, but then I quickly realized that mod my modern day contemporaries don't know the m difference between a 2019, 2020 military uniform and one from 80 years ago. And Are you so, in the military? No, I get a lot of thank you for your service. And I, I, I stopped because I'm a reenactor, but I'll take it. So I, now I just take my blouse off and just go in there with a t-shirt on. Okay. And I'll have my boots, my pants on, but I won't have like my leggings and helmet on all that shit. But now I usually just wear a what's a, uh, what's the skeleton t-shirt for um, shameless plugs. But no, oh, I okay. there were a few times like when I was in a hurry, I woke up late and I put my uniform on at the top of the gas station and I would get that. So I even had like a... Uh, ROTC kid like in their uniform from high school saying like no first off now 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 to give them credit it's going to be a little more confusing because the army did bring back the pink and green so their class A uniforms yes, are very very they're not dead nuts exact because of the patch placement in the modern day um, things like that but the cut of the Eisenhower jacket and all that is very reminiscent of all all that good stuff <sighs> came home to 80s night on the movies on, I'm uh, sorry AMC blue actually no AMC did like all 80s and then they played Fury last night but uh we we're watching Ferris Bueller's day off and this is kind of a, a subject Bueller. matter maybe you have one or two that's been bothering you Ferris Bueller's been around forever and barely quit chewing on your feet and one of the things that always bothered me about that movie which is stupid because the movies you know it's all make-believe anyhow but even as a young kid I couldn't wrap my mind remember when his sister came home from school to try to bust him yes and uh, before she found Rooney in the kitchen, she opens the front door. And what do you see? Do you remember? I have not seen the movie in forever. So no. So basically the, one of the through lines through the entire movie is, and people now with days that they've reissued save Ferris t-shirts, but as through one of the through lines around the high school and the town, and even through the city of Chicago to the point where they have save failure, save Ferris at the Chicago uh, baseball stadium mm -hmm. is the lie perpetuates from Ferris having a temperature to failure having a, uh, Ferris having a kidney failure to Ferris being almost dead. And so people start sending him. Basically, the answer to that question is when she opens the door, the entire house is full of flowers and balloons and get well cards. But I, I could never figure that out as a kid because he's not home. Him and Cameron and Simone are out <laughs> exactly. running around Chicago. Mom and dad are at work. There's no housekeeper. Otherwise, the movie wouldn't work because they would have known Ferris wasn't home. Did florist and florist delivery services in Chicago in 1989 have the keys to your house? How did all that shit get in there? And that was always one of those plot holes on that movie that just always drove me nuts. Obviously, it was there to make her mad because she was so jealous of him when she came in the house. But to me, it always bothered me. Like, how the fuck did those get in there? Plot hole. This don't make sense. My head explode. How does this work? Exactly. That's when we got to suspend disbelief, right? Yeah, I guess, but it's just one of everything we know about how life functions out the window. But it's just funny out of all the entire subject matter, Fer Ferris Bueller, that's the one thing that bumped me. Not the stealing of the car, not pretending to be Simone's dad. Oh, the other thing that pissed me off. Now, I know AMC bought the pre edited version, it's already been edited for TV. But a station uh -huh. that plays Walking Dead that has been known to drop a few F bombs. Um mm -hmm. When they censor out, when uh, Cameron's trying to get Simone out of school and he's arguing with Dr. Ed Rooney, and uh, right. basically Ed knows that it's a scam. He says, uh, okay, tell you what, produce a corpse and then bring it down here and I'll let your daughter out of school. And then that's when the secretary comes in and says, Ferris Bueller's on line nine. And all of a sudden he's like, <laughs> he freaks out because here he is thinking he's talking to Ferris, doing a voice. And so after he talks to Ferris, he comes back on and he's, he's all like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Cameron says, pardon my French, but you're an asshole. They completely censored the asshole line out of that. I'm like, it's AMC. They play, they fucking damn. But once again, I know it's probably a pre-edited, but I was so disappointed that they edited out that whole exchange because he said, you're an asshole. <laughs> That's one of the major lines of the movie. You can't. Mm-hmm. But they did. 
but they did. You saw Mr. Oliver got to meet a uh, Boston this weekend for his first time. Mm-hmm. What you think of that? Uh, so he did good at the dog park. He's still a little, um, a little timid, but that could be just the breed or or the fact that he was attacked. That was very first visit. Um, but uh, he's he's doing good. Uh, and fuck, man, it's been awesome. We got a bunch of stuff going on in the yard this weekend, and uh, I feel like we're probably overdoing it a little, but I. I just feel it needs to be done, you know? Oh, I don't know if you had this on your list of shit because it was so long ago we had this conversation. But are you want, are you willing to throw a local celebrity under the bus? I don't even know if I'd call him a celebrity because he's not even on their IMDB page. But he, he's gotten screen time, right? Yeah, he was shown. Okay, before before we reveal, explain your frustrations and the the thing that has driven you to be a Darren. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think Chad would be the <laughs> the Darren, the the male Karen. So they built this uh, fucking Seven Eleven across the street from us, which I I did not want to see go on. When your house was I, built, it was an empty lot, right? It was an empty lot. The the road was. It was okay. The as far as you knew, your neighborhood's not in a commercially zoned area. It was actually, I think it was zoned commercial, but I was thinking that since there is one gas station mm-hmm. two blocks to the south and a gas station of an eighth of a mile to the north, and there's two residential neighborhoods on opposite corners, a school on one corner, that this would, and they were actually going to turn it into apartments. I'm kind of wishing they did. Um, but they would just, you know, keep this kind of on a residential side. No. So they built this. Um, for the last couple of months. What did they build? A 7-Eleven. Now, it's funny what you're saying because you're talking about the distance of gas stations. 7-Eleven don't give a fuck. No, my God. They built a million of them around here this year. No, to the point that this direction from my house, not even a mile away, there is a franchise-owned 7-Eleven. Full 7-Eleven minus the car wash. The only gas mm-hmm. station um, in this residential area. And 7-Eleven went uh, a mile and a half away on the same thoroughfare and built one, including a car wash, uh, which has greatly... Re- I'm sure they did a uh, traffic study, but it greatly reduced. It's like, how are you going to build a corporate 7-Eleven three blocks away from your franchise to own 7-Eleven and take half the business from your franchise owner. That's just shitty. I'm sorry. It is. That's just, that's bad form. <clears throat> so there's been this escalate out there once, maybe twice a day. And I'm talking escalate pickup truck, just fucking the system of systems, right? Probably got like two fifteens in it. Is the, I, what, uh, is the bed covered? I think it's, huh? Is the bed covered? I, I haven't looked that close, but I think it could be even 18s. Well, I mean, this has kind of got the subs that are so low that it almost makes you think THX shit in a theater. Well, that's my question. If there's a bed cover on it, maybe the entire bed's full, but if not, it's got to be in the cab. So I kind of mentioned something to the, the manager. Hey, man, do you know who's, who's but, but driving that escort? This guy would show up early in the morning and like rattle you and your wife out of bed, right? Uh, I'm usually at work unless it's the weekend, but yeah, about 8 o'clock in the morning. And then, but then he started showing up and he'd be there like 20 fucking minutes, just boom, boom, boom. And, and I get it. He probably has it. What he thinks is turn. Mm-hmm, turned Maybe down. not. But, uh, you know, I said something originally. I thought it was a different vehicle. Uh, you know, Hey man, not to be a dick, but do you know who's driving this? I thought it was a silver SUV at the time. Then uh, come to find out it was this Escalade. And, and, and my wife I kind of made a call. Hey, man, can you just have him knock that shit off a little? There's, there's so you guys at this point are calling the 7-Eleven and saying, hey, yeah, this guy's over there twice a day, every single day, 20 minutes waking on time. Up. Yep. We we said kids. She told her, you're waking up my babies. But uh, <laughs> Already um, using your dog as an excuse. Pretty soon you'll use poor yeah. Oliver as a reason why you can't do family functions. We do it all the time. Can't. Mm. No one to watch the p- cat. Yeah, well, we, we're starting to take Oliver everywhere. But anyway, um, so I, then it was like all of a sudden he's there for like a couple of times a day and continue because I swear I see par- cars come up and leave. So I'm thinking maybe there's some fucking dealing going on there. I don't want that shit going on across my fucking house. Yeah, after all, your house is already um, broken into once. Yeah, it's already broken into once. If there's an errant gunfire, you know, I, I, I don't know how much stuck is going to stop a gun round. But uh, 
So I went and I said something. I said, hey, man, who's, what's up with this, this Escalade? She goes, I, you know, your wife must be calling. I said, yes, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, it, it's gotten to this point. And she goes, uh, well, you know, I say something to this guy and he just doesn't listen. And I said, well, is there drug dealing going on? She goes, oh, no, no, no. Do you know who it is? I said, no, if I did, I wouldn't no. be asking you who the fuck it was. <laughs> she goes, it's this guy named Dweezy from Counting Cars. The Discovery and, Channel uh, show. Yes, W D W E E Z Y, and I was like, I don't care who the guy fucking thinks he is. <laughs> he needs to knock the shit off. Mm-hmm. She goes, I tell him, but he just wants attention. I'm like, oh, he's getting attention. I'm about to come over here and, <laughs> and give him some fucking attention, you know. So I'm kind of my hands are kind of. Yeah, he's tied. a little looking. Do. He's a little dude. I thought he's gonna he be like some big dude, stocky yes. dude. This guy looks like he's like a little little Wayne want to be. Off guy. Yeah. yeah. He's, He's probably uh, compensating there. But, um, yeah, so I was just like, fuck. And it's just like, every, it's like, come on, dude. Seriously? I get it. We all were young. Hell, ours is the generation that created that proliferated that shit. And, you know, the 90s, I know y'all wanted to come back. But just take. I'll be honest with you. Think I've, about the neighbors. I've considered putting a, that 10-inch back in my truck. But once again, that's a 10-inch. It's not. Yeah, but would you sit at a. a no, because I don't want my shit stolen. Exactly. That's another thing. It's advertising steal my shit. I already don't understand the people who go into the gas stations and leave their cars on and leave them empty, let alone having your system bump and so everybody knows what the fuck's in it, especially in a town like Las Vegas. Hold on. I got to let the damn dog out. Go ahead. So yeah, what happened in a town like here? So I haven't really done anything with it. I know uh, Don and I have talked about just like putting this guy in blast on social media. <sighs> Yeah, it could create attention for the show, but is that the attention the show wants? Could be worse. Could be that fucking d- that turd horny Mike. I don't even know if he's still on that show. That guy always fucking annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah, so I'm like, whatever. I mean, again, it could create attention for the show if we put him on blast. But nah, we don't have enough. We don't have enough audience to, <laughs> to create that sort of attention. Small podcast douchebag puts Dweezy on blast. He's com- this this Karen, this male Karen, is bitching about his his system. It's like, come on, just I don't know. You just know, it's- take some consideration. I don't care if you roll up bumping. Mm-hmm. And you roll away bumping, but just don't fucking sit there like some kind of douchebag saying, Hey, I want everybody to hear my fucking shit because it sucks, but I still think it's good. Yeah. We've all gone through that stage, but we were like fucking teenagers. It's, it's funny speaking of cars and all that. One of the things, because I just came off of a five hour road trip, 351 miles. One of my favorite things to do, especially when you got cruise control. Um, obviously when you set the GPS on your car, it's based off of the distance, the known traffic at the time and the speed limit. It does Mm -hmm. not calculate PP stops and food stops and this and that. Correct. But I always set my cruise control about 82 miles an hour. The traffic, the speed limit on the interstate from here all the way through Georgia is 70. So I set it at 82 and still have people riding my ass and sailing past me. So I'm not too worried about getting pulled over. When I left... Um, when I left there Saturday to come home, I was scheduled to be home at three 30, okay. even though I stopped for gas and food and a bathroom break. I, I saw it a good solid 30 minutes off that time. I got home a half hour earlier and as I'm driving, you know, it's nice to see the, the, the arrive time ticking down lower and lower, even though, you know, it's not like, Oh, well you drove that time off. No, it says you'll be here at this time. And I saw it a half hour off. So one of the things I like to do is ra- it's like you're earning time back. It's like you're the one time you can actually race the clock. Well, speaking of vehicles. So since I got some positive things kind of happening, um, I made a mistake today. <laughs> mistake was is i had was doing some online research for pickup trucks okay but i kind of wanted to get an idea of the actual price and what i have to pay on a monthly payment get that credit ran God, I chum the fucking waters for my email and my phone every one of these guys and i got a good deal on a couple things but you know i'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards the bigger variant of this vehicle mm-hmm. or maybe one horns on it because they actually got a pretty good price Toad as shit out of it, but uh, your uh, your internet sucks tonight. By the way, you keep cracking up. That's all right. We'll we'll suffer through. But anyway, uh, all of a sudden they're just come on, man. Just come on down. What do I got to do to get you into this? Leave me alone. So here's the deal. Number one, you want me to get told the to fuck off real quick. Keep bothering me. Number nope. two, I'm I'm, I'm kind of just literally as I said, this is Explorer. 
you know, and I am going to go to one place on just to kind of get an idea of the looks and, and the quality, and that's it because that's not what I want. I said, here's the deal. I want, and I'll say it, I want a Tundra TRD Pro. Yeah, you That's do. what my goal is, all right? I don't want to, if I'm going to get a truck, I'm going to get what the fuck I want. I'm not going to settle for a lower variant. After all, if you're going to have a guy with truck problems, you better have a nice truck to deal with those problems with when you're hauling all your friends' fucking shit around. Well, fortunately, I'll go with the shortest bed possible. And then put a Help truck bed some. box in there to make it even and smaller. I looked, at, I looked at campers and what a Tacoma can pull, and I'm like, eh, You already I know the answer to that. That's how well, I got a Tundra. Well, yeah, you get a Tundra of it. Then I saw something on the way home. I was like, oh, that's a nice looking F-150 pulling that big ass truck. And I pulled up to it. I was like, well, oh, fuck, that's a new diesel? Ranger. Oh. <laughs> and the new Ranger is allegedly supposed to be able to tow 7,100 pounds. How long is that transmission going to last, though? Yeah, and it's a, it's a dual scroll turbocharger. So yeah. it's our two turbos. So, so I'm like, well, I, and here's the deal. The Tundra's changing next year. The whole platform is getting... Well, they have runs. to because, I, because I'm a Toyota guy. When I scroll left on my phone it brings up news feed and i get a lot of toyota stuff and a lot of reviews and one of the biggest beefs they're getting constantly beat over the head with is nothing's really changed with the tundra since 2008 or whatever and so well a car should be completely redone every five years yeah so i think the tundras are great the new ones I look awesome uh, i got an 18 i couldn't afford a 20 but they're badass trucks all the way around they're durable. Hell, even the even them crazy Alaskans on Alaska Frontier, Last Frontier, drive their Tundras with the cracked windshields. By the way, what? I got a crack in mine this weekend. <clears throat> I need to. I called my insurance today, and they said they do comprehensive. So, and they said I can take it anywhere. I'm gonna call. Just watch out with that windshield replacement. You may end up. With well, I'm gonna. Friends. I'm going to call Safe for Life and see if they can, because it's about the size of a dime, and it's like uh, literally an X with a line through it. So it's one yeah. line away from a snowflake. Say, I want OEM replacement. Well, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to see if they can use their epoxy on it. If they can't, then I'm just going to take the fucking thing to Toyota and have them put it. Because my insurance company said I can do it, take it anywhere. So yeah, if I got to do a replacement, I'm taking it to Toyota. But if, if they take can do... Take it from this guy right here. You know? If they can just epoxy it, and so my insurance don't take such a quite a big ding, and then I don't also don't have to lose my truck for two days or however long it takes to get the glass in, I'll do that. But well, if it needs... Like, well, you know, Gordon, why would you want the TRD Pro? Uh, because if I go off road, it's already got the off road Fox suspension. Mm -hmm. It's already got the skid plates. And <laughs> dude, it just looks fucking badass. Yeah. And I think I have a lot of these. I'll, I'll give a field survival. And a lot God, of these yeah. guys out there, uh, you know, they are getting poo pooed, although they are actually middle of the road guys. And the vehicle preference of choice is Toyota. And again, you're thinking about guys who were in the service, they're in the Middle East, uh, overseas, in this shit for a decade plus in CIA. And they say, the reason we like the Toyotas, he goes, I can't afford, but the Toyotas are just far more reliable. Mm -hmm. It comes down to reliability. And, uh, and resale that, value. And resale value, which I've come to find out, the tacos are the ho highest resale value of any vehicle on the planet. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, it's my idea. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, I've already driven, driven Katina nuts with this today. And she had to talk me off a ledge or I would have ended up compensating, you know, or sacrificing what I really wanted for something else. And believe me, I love the cross trek, but I'm a tall guy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of wearing a little <laughs> thin on me. If you get to the point where you decide what you want, um, one of the things I've done to streamline that is when you're finally ready to pull the trigger – Call the salesperson on the phone, give them your VIN number on your trade-in, all that information. Let them do all that paperwork I, I did, I did before that you get there. No, I mean, even when you finally decide to pull the trigger, have them yeah. draw up all the paper. So when you get down there, all you got to do is sign the crap, wait for the credit check, sit down with the sales manager, and cut your time. If, if you guys haven't bought a brand-new car in a while or ever, and you're at that stage in life um, and you're going down, if you're going off the lot unprepared, that is a six-hour proposition all day long. Oh, yeah. So streamline it. Look around on the internet. Maybe go check the thing out. Scooch out of there. Call them up. Give the sales guy your VIN number. Um, be honest with about the mileage and what you think mm -hmm. the quality is. They'll come up with the pre-quote. Well, obviously, when you bring it down there, they'll check it out and 
maybe even give you more money. But yeah, don't don't just sit down there sight unseen and spend an entire day down there. Because even if you do what I just said, it's still gonna be three hours. But three hours is sure to ship better than six, seven. Why well, I, I allegedly can get between fifteen and seventeen thousand out of the cross track. There you go. And um, well, that's what we did when we got the Forester. Is I actually had called up the guy. I said, here's here's the um, here's the inventory number of the vehicle I'm looking at. Even went down to that point, you know. Do you still have it? Yes. Okay. And we went through the rigmarole with the trade in, and I think we were in and out of there in two hours, which is pretty quick for auto auto you know auto retailer. So, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a while. I got to save some some ducats, and uh, just trying to trying to dream a little. Looking forward to the future. Uh, the goal is to get uh, you know a couple acres up in Utah somewhere so I can take a camper and just hang out of the valley i'm trying to text nugget to see if she'll stop playing call of duty if it fixes your stream but you think 300 megs down that carrie's sleeping because she's not feeling well we're streaming and nuggets playing call of duty it usually doesn't affect us but your your audio is crumbling in and out pretty bad let's get a second to buffer and we'll just do the tiktok lesson of the week this one's a little long okay. but the message is important and now for the what's in your head podcast tiktok lesson of the week listen to you little fucks you gotta stop putting so much importance on having a following easy for you to say when you have a following yeah you're right i do have a following and i'm still fucking over it it was super dope for a couple weeks and then it got even more dope when the keyboard killers came around saying shit like i'm gonna kill you and i'm like fuck i wish a motherfucker would that sounds dope and not even one of them even tried it that was sad now listen i'm not married to you so don't put words in sentences that weren't there i'm not complaining i'm just trying to get these kids to understand i've been able to do a lot of dope ass shit i've been able to help a lot of dope ass people but it's not all it's cracked up to be Kiddos, you put way too much of your self-worth into how many random motherfuckers on the internet you can get to click the like button. Your self-worth is not based off the quality of your content, it's based off the quality of your character. That's what the GFC is all about, having great fucking character. Hashtag March Lincoln bio. Listen, if you want to do this shit, I think that's super fucking dope. I'm just saying don't go chasing likes for a dream that doesn't exist. Do what you want to do, not what you think is going to make other people like you. Otherwise, you end up making a song called Lonely. But I digress. Okay, bye. Whoop! And this has been the What's in Your Head podcast TikTok lesson of the week. Yeah, it's I, I we usually go for some kind of funny, but I saw that and you know it has a little humor to it and has a good point to it as well. So I would just figure, hey, we'll we'll get that. Hey, we want to hear from you. Send us an email. We haven't done this in a while. Email us at info at dhyphen four ten dot com. Any complaints, suggestions, questions, or anything on your mind, anything that's in your head, if you will, uh, send us an email. That's Info at d-410.com. This episode of the What's in Your Head podcast is brought to you by our friends at At Computers. At Computers has been providing IT solutions since 2005 to all of Southwest Florida. Even if you don't live in Southwest Florida, they can help you. Give them a call at 239-283-1120. As long as you have working internet, they can log in your computer and help you with all of your issues. Even uh, installing a fancy printer if you need to. If you live locally, give them a call at 239-283-1120. Or go over to act-capecoral.com and they can help you with computer repair, laptop repair, phone repair, tablet repair, camera installation, server migrations, network expansions, etc., etc., etc. Antivirus protection, 2-form authentication, and online backup. Yes, yeah, right. Online backup is so important right now. Give them a call at 239-283-1120 and they'll give you $0.07 cents a gig per month. And while you're on the internet looking up ACT Computers on Google or going to act-capecoral.com, head over to d-410.com and click on that beautiful Patreon link. And if you're doing it from a cell phone or a smartphone, you got to scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see the orange banner. Click on it, sign up. It's $1 a month. And that'll help support the show and help support the YouTube channel. Speaking of YouTube, got a video coming up with the new GoPro 7. I didn't go with the 8 because, well, it's too expensive and the 7 works just as great. And uh, the footage, if anybody follows me on TikTok or seen the YouTube, uh, the preview snippet that I posted on uh, Facebook on the What's the Scuttlebutt page, you'll <laughs> see the quality of that video. Um, so the camera is awesome. And hopefully it'll increase the quality and the content on the YouTube channel. But head over to d-410.com. Hmm. Let's talk parenting a little bit. Yeah, I got 113 down and 8 up. But that's where we're at right now. But... Uh, so parenting every once in a while well, I'm a parent of is two two animals yeah well for the listening audience you guys can email me your suggestions and uh one of the things our generation likes to do is complain about the younger generations as every generation before us like to complain about the generations after them now this is the younger generation that our generation has created correct correct it's kind of a point um 
I think a lot of parents like to call out shit when it comes to other people's kids, but don't put any effort into fixing their kids <laughs> to prevent other people from complaining about their kids. You know what you should do? Yeah. Bad damn over, kids, over get off the lawn. hours a day. Don't let them do anything. Don't let them get hurt. Be their friends. Is that what it is? I don't know. I just... When it comes to Nugget, because my daughter's, you know, Katie's already in her 20s and, and you know, she's already. I teach him not to say literally, literally every three. No, she's literally. in the literally phase and she is a procrast- professional procrastinator. Everything is tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. So I'm in the tomorrow stage. But um, one of the things we try to teach her is the importance of following through on commitments and responsibility. And she'll get annoyed and mad when we ask her to do things around the house. And it's not even that we want... We, obviously, we it's we need these things done to help lighten a load on our plate. But furthermore, we're, the things we ask her to do are things that everybody has to do in their households, right? Does she say, I'll literally do it tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I was thinking about today, the things that we're trying to teach her to do or to make mm-hmm. a common practice is the things that everybody has to do so that when she gets to the age where she moves into her house... The items that she's being asked to do will be items that she's hopefully built a routine of doing, cleaning up after yourself, cleaning your dishes, doing your laundry, yada, 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 so that when she makes her transition into apartment, those things are already habitual, so it's not, she's not one of these people you go over there and the house is a, literally a fucking mess, right? Because she already has these healthy things built into her, her background, and so then she'll just have to add all the other stuff on top of it. You literally said literally. Yeah, I know. And I did that intentionally. It's called a it's called a callback. But uh, and then we also try to teach her that there's consequences for everything. Once again, not so much. Oh, you didn't listen to me. I'm your parent. It's more we're trying to instill into her one thing that'll turn it on the fucking news. No one has an appreciation for is the fact that there's always going to be an authoritarian figure in your life, whether it's a parent, a boss, a police officer, whatever. There's Joe always going to be somebody has more power over you than you that you have to listen to. And I often tell her, you know, if you talk to cops the way you talk to us when you get upset, you're going to end up in fucking juvie or jail when you get pulled over at 16 or 18. And for a simple traffic you're literally violation, gonna be- you're going to be put in a who's scout. And so yeah. we try to instill that sort of stuff. But then there's mm-hmm. also the power of silly consequence, the power of consequences to silly decision making. <laughs> and I don't know if this makes me a bad parent, like, one like of the things blowing your phone up. One of the things um, Nugget and Carrie like to do, especially if I'm out of town or I'm not home on the weekends, is they enjoy tropical smoothie, which on its face value sounds like a healthier alternative, but it's not. Colonel Clink's gone. Let's get our tropical smoothies. <laughs> yeah, you know because the the tropical smoothies just fucking ice cream. I mean, yes, they put smoothies in them, sugar, got sugar right? and fucking everything else, but but whatever. I'm not. It's still better than McDonald's, I guess. <laughs> but I, I reckon the last time see I, I switched um, apparently to I reckon I reckon the last time they went um, Sariana cast her eyes upon a new menu item called the mocha smoothie now she fancies herself a Starbucks and so she's doing the Starbucks math thinking this mocha smoothie is going to be pretty yummy that's a chocolate shake and Carrie told her, you're not going to like that. Get your normal thing. And I guess she was a little disappointed that Carrie, quote unquote, forced her to get her normal thing. So tonight, I get home a little late for work. Carrie's still feeling like crap. Um, I was like, we'll cook the pork chops tomorrow. What do you guys want tonight? I suggested pizza. I'll go out and get something. But the the die was cast and it landed on a tropical smoothie. Okay, whatever. I'll get a quesadilla and a, and a paradise point. Because I've been eating the same sub from Subway since 1993. I've been drinking the same coffee from Starbucks since 2004 when I was first introduced to my first. Change. I first <laughs> introduced to my first Starbucks in Irvine, California. I basically ordered what the professor ordered because I didn't know I, my hillbilly Kentucky and Ohio and ass had never been in a Starbucks. Didn't know anything, so I just ordered. What'd you order? I copied his Grande food? White Mocha Hot with an extra shot. It's the only thing I've been drinking there, other than a black coffee, since 2004. It's what I get now. And I still order my foot-long spicy Italian with uh, double meat, light lettuce, extra pickles, God tomatoes, salt, it. pepper, oil, and vinegar. Since if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
<laughs> well, what happens? Now, I'm not saying don't try new things. If you go, but by all means, you go to a, a Japanese steakhouse, try some sushi for the first time. If you go into a nice sit-down restaurant, let your fingers walk the menu. But when it comes to fast food, let's be honest. Chances are the new menu item or getting the, the, a new menu item, there's a 40% chance you're not going to like it, right? And there is. And, and for those playing along, Don really said finger the menu. Yes. Let your, finger, let your fingers do the walking. And so she said, I want to try the Smoka shake. Okay, go ahead. You sure? Fast forward to us at home. She's drinking oh, it. She Ooh. wanted to take it. Oh. She's forcing it down. <laughs> Try to keep a happy, delighted face on my room because we're we're all eating in the, my room. You know, I got my quesadilla. She has her quesadilla. Carrie has her Southwest Chipotle flatbread, and I got my Paradise Point. Carrie has hers, and but you can smell this, this faint smell of like fucking so hot. You're chocolate. not around the dinner table. No, nah, we we usually when we cook at home, we eat at a dinner table. Carrie's been sleeping all day, and whatever. And uh, we watch TV in my bedroom because, well, the birds are too fucking loud. But <laughs> that's another story. And and I'm sitting there thinking, she finally says, I drink half of it. Can I throw the other half away? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking, a nicer parent would offer up theirs. <laughs> the one thing that she's had many times, the Paradise <laughs> yeah, Point. I'm, mine. I'm thinking, would a better parent just say, here, have mine? Or... Should we learn the lesson of consequence when it comes to changing the menu item at a restaurant? Yeah, you, you want mine? How's it feel to want? So guess what didn't happen? I didn't offer up mine. <laughs> she threw hers away and ate a rest of chicken quesadilla and drank water. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm sure most parents say, here, you can have mine. No, you are warned the first time that you're probably not going to like it. So you almost took the Christopher Titus's dad's approach. What's that? Just being a dick? You no, know, you know, like example. Yeah, yeah, or you know, as a a four in a, in a uh, and mom says, oh, "Stop!" And he goes, "Nope, nope." Kid shocks himself. He goes, "Won't do that again, now, will you?" Exactly. You know, once again, I'm all for. You know, we encourage her to try new things when we go to real restaurants and all that. And I'm not saying, hey, you shouldn't expand your horizons, but this is fucking tropical smoothie. New menu items. Hmm. What? Well, I don't know. Maybe if it's lunch, risk it because you can eat again in three hours. But when it comes to dinner time, maybe you should go with the the solid, no, the the known good because you're not going to be eating for another eight hours. So I don't know. I gotta, I gotta ask her. If she's streaming. Somebody's streaming, but it's the, right. your internet connection is on the still. Are you streaming? You ever heard of the phrase "jack of all trades"? Or none. You know the whole phrase, the whole saying, because we you know we in America like to bastardize sayings and make them fit to what we we want them to mean. No, I just know he's a ma he's a jack of all trades, master of none. But oftentimes better than a master of one. That is the full written saying. Jack of all trades is a master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one. Uh, I don't know if I buy that one. Really? That's I mean, I know saying, but I don't know why that, that. Now I just have a picture of you staring at the ceiling. <laughs> no, there you go. You're, you're full blown max headroom in it now. Do we want to question? Do we want to take a brief intermission and re restart our, um, our zoom meeting here? Yeah, I think we're going to need to see. Stand by yeah, because I know this is going to be incredibly painful for those of you who tune in on Facebook, Stitcher, Spotify, and all the uh, fun stuff. So we're going to take a brief intermission and see if we can get his uh, video signal back, and then we'll do the news.